staying with us. There you are. Literally. All right, a bit of a technical hitch there, but welcome back to Checkpoint. We thank you for being with us. Our SMS line this evening is 22155. And on Twitter, at KTN News, at Yvonne Okwara. The hashtag to use is Checkpoint. We've asked you a question there, and uh, I think it's along the lines of uh, whether you think political leaders prioritize uh, your needs. Well, we're going to try and reset our needs here on the show tonight. My guest, Nanjira Sambuli, who's an advocacy manager at Web Foundation. Thank you. And we have Joseph Kyoko, governance expert, who really needs to get on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring it on here. Yeah. Ah. A little a pressure. Just a here. little pressure. A and Dr. Alex Awiti from the Aga Khan <laughs> University, director of the East African Institute. Thanks. Thank you, lady, gentlemen. It's good to have you. Pleasure. Um, a lot has happened, uh, I think, over the last, what, week or two. Um, and I want to start with you, Nanjira. Um, uh, there's been a lot of focus uh, politically around voter registration. But just sort of set the tone for us as to where we are and whether we are sort of heading in the right direction, thinking the way we should be, the way we should be. I, I think <laughs> there are multiple ways to look at what's happening. Um, it's very telling that politicians, amidst everything that's going on, amidst drought, amidst um, a health crisis, the focus is just vote. I don't know how sick people or thirsty people are supposed to vote. And the f uh, it's wonderful to see the pushback um, from constituents who are like, well, if you want my vote, I need water. It's, and it's also very tragic that um, it's basic needs that people have to say. It's not about even um, I need you know, X amount of investment done in this area. It's the basic stuff. In 2017, we're still trying to fight for basic stuff. It is deeply tragic. Um, but I think it's, there's a finger, uh, if you put a finger on the pulse here, I think Kenyans are reaching a point where there's comforts around escaping politics or surviving because we're good at surviving. We're very resilient people. We work hard despite the odds. There's, we're reaching a point where it's not necessarily possible sustainable anymore. And those, so it's also very an interesting time to look at it that way. Um, but it's also very telling. And I think the question has become for many people, why are you registered to vote? I don't see any sound option. No one mm. is bringing an alternative. That's going to be a very interesting question to watch over the next okay. couple of months. Voter apathy. And, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But Nigeria says, I mean, it's a focus. For, it's, it's the fight, basically, for survival at its most basic form. But others in government would uh, say different. I mean, uh, we've just seen uh, the clip that ran a short while ago in our news bulletin. And the government is touting, you know, its development, infrastructure. So where are we with that? How is it that we can be in a country that is moving so far with infrastructure, but yet, you know, people are still starving? Two million of them. I think uh, the, 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 there are two issues at play. Mm -hmm. The first one is that we are a very political country. We are a country that survives on politics, day in, day out. Public policy analysis uh, or looking at a campaign that is issue-based is a secondary factor when we look at Kenya. Uh, we, we are very political. Now, in the last election, voter registration was not a core issue. Mm -hmm. But after the voter registration, Mutai Nguni came up with the analysis of tyranny of numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody knew that elections are won or you lose the elections based on the people that you register to vote. Now, this election, that issue has come to the forefront. Even though he says tyranny of numbers is No, no, it, it, <laughs> it, it's a lesson that was learned. Okay. And nobody wants to be defeated or nobody wants to suffer the consequences of not getting your people to register. Mm -hmm. You might have the census numbers, but if you don't get these people to vote for you, if you don't get them armed to have voters card, then you miss this issue. Even if you campaign in whichever way, so that's, that's where we are as a country, and it's critical that way. But in terms of issues of, of the campaign, are we there yet? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I don't think, I, I, my strong feeling is that we are yet to get into the proper campaign mode. People are mistaking issues here. People are mistaking- Are, are we not in campaign mode oh. already? We, I, I, not yet. Let me tell you, not yet. We, we've not gotten to that, not so yet. Is we, it the best or the worst? <laughs> we, we, we are climbing. We, we, okay. are, we are likely 35 degrees into it, but uh -huh. we will get to 70, we'll get to 80 degrees into the campaign uh, stature. Today, the issues, look at the health issues, look at the health issues that are affecting the country. You don't have, there's no country really that you can go on business as usual and you have doctors on strike. And for 56 days, there are people who are dying in this country, yet you still consider voter registration as a core issue. You, you have a country where a, an accessible number of the population is dying out of drought, yet no leader is coming out to articulate this issue or to pose the campaign 
to articulate these issues and say this is what we are doing in terms of uh, alleviation of the drought situation. You have a situation where corruption is rampant in this country. And people are not panicking. People are saying we can live with these ills, but let's now go on with voter registration because it's the critical element today. Now, that's the crisis mm. in our country today. Is it the critical element today, though, Dr. Awiti? Uh, and please explain to us the nexus between uh, you know, elected leaders, politics, and development, because it does exist. Surely, um, Kenyans elect uh, people into a national assembly to go and represent them, um, to decide what happens with their money, to basically dis make decisions on governance, and what happens in looking out for their interests. So what's that nexus between that that we're, we're missing in this country? I think there's a historical path dependence to all of this. And if you look at Kenya's politics and how it's been crafted, and uh, all of the structural appendages that support that political infrastructure, it's really about ethnic calculus. You know, that's just how simple Kenyan politics is. Uh, it is disappointing that uh, 50, 60 years into, into independence, we still haven't crafted a basis for competing in a political space that is and a competition that is driven by, by an agenda. You know, you boil out the agenda and anything development is incidental. The main core around which we organize is ethnicity. And it's very interesting that when Mr. Kenyatta and Mr. Odinga first went out to mobilize, they went to the ethnic stronghold. Mm -hmm. And now the whole conversation around NASA is is this ethnic feuding? How many of uh, Kalonzo's people might show on board, and why does Kalonzo have an upper hand and Raila, etc.? So, as as we, as we Tangula said, if 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 Luya's show more numbers, then it's going to be either him or Mudavadi. So, again, you see the ethnic balkanization on the other side. It's jubilee, uh, uh, basically uh, an ethnic uh, duo. Uh, Kalenjins and Kikuyus, and then everybody else who might come to think. So, I think that. Fundamentally, it's also a critical failure in citizenship. And I think it's, a, it's an inability of us to understand what really are our responsibilities. And as Nigeria said, why should I vote? What's on the ballot? Why can't, if citizens begin to ask that question and basically say, what's in it for me? Right now, we are either trying to give Raila a job as the mm -hmm. next president or preserve Uhuru in his current job. Mm -hmm. Why should it be my responsibility to keep politicians on the payroll? What is it for the citizens of this country? And until citizens begin to ask those questions, then that nexus becomes blurred. Mm. I think the citizens must drive their agenda. Uh, as, as, as Joseph said, how can you have a country where politicians are tone deaf when people are starving, mm. there's no water, there's no food, animals are dying, livelihoods are being exterminated, doctors are out of work, people are dying in hospitals, we had a crisis in education that is still unresolved. We're just about to launch a new curriculum. We haven't taken in the lessons from the last failures of the, of, of the, of the last 844. Eight, eight so I think citizens in this country have just checked out. Okay. But also, not to All give right. up on it, uh -huh. if, if I can just yeah. jump in, not to yeah. give up on, on the citizenship. Because it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Remember, people got used to this order of doing stuff. There's a, there's a population that is coming up that went through free primary education. There's a population that went through free secondary education right. that is coming into the demographics of voting. Now, the older generation is dying, mm. the younger generation that is educated and is discovering that truly it's not tribal orientation that will define how I vote, but rather uh, issues and policy campaign. Now, it may not happen overnight, but I, I have faith that our young people today in this country, those who've gone to school, those who've had, and you can see the education opportunities that the people are getting going up to the university level, then they'll be coming out and asking the real question, really, well, am I electing Kyoko because he's Kamba, or am I electing Kyoko because he brings to the table what addresses my day-in, day-out concern? I mean, we are getting there. I must jump in as someone who's somewhat in that quarter you're speaking about. Yes, we're more educated. Um, we were sold the Soma Kijana Mwisho Kusomu Tapataka Zinzuri Sana dream. We have studied, we have worked hard, um, but we're getting into this system that is not working. And so when push comes to shove, you fall back on what's, um, you know, what's practical. We do not grow up in a vacuum. If in our household, that's what is being discussed, tribe X, tribe Y, who politician X said this, politician X said Y, you know? Um, what happens in the end when the rubber meets the road? And a lot of people are being pushed to that corner right now. 
you were told to study, you studied all hard. Look at doctors now. When I went to school, being a doctor was mm. the height of it all. I mean, it was the highest cutoff, you know, all of that stuff. Look at what's happening now. So I think it's a bit naive to think that um, youth will just spontaneously do better yeah, but, because but yet, it's not in a vacuum. Yes, but, but yet we up. see voter apathy particularly amongst the youth. Again, in that story that, that we aired, a young person saying, well, you know, uh, why should I bother to go out and vote, if, you know? So there is a bit of apathy there. There, there is, there is. There but is also a, a sense of also and I think a sense that's of probably the tipping point. Isn't it? Because even when you take a look at social media, a place where, you know, populated by a lot of young people, persons who've been educated, persons who have exposure and have seen the world, either by traveling there or, you know, I mean, the internet has made the world a global village, but yet you can still tell um, the comments that are going to be made based on someone's last name. And a lot of the people on Twitter, I mean, are young people. My mother isn't on Twitter and she's certainly let me, not 25. I believe, let me tell you, this, this is where we, we, we shouldn't give up hope. Truly, we shouldn't give up hope. So what do the, we do the, then? The, the first thing is mm -hmm. that we who are uh, we are the good guys who are seated here because we, we consider ourselves not to be politicians must play an active role in politics of this country either going and synthesizing the youth to know the critical role that they must play we, we must take the forefront of saying we who've gone to school are going to aspire into positions of leadership so that when we become leaders we can change this ball game otherwise we, we get confronted by people who didn't go to school who enjoy the politics of uh, tribal arithmetic and will always excel and we won't get specific. I disagree. This is not about education. Uru and Rai Lodinga are very educated. Kalonzo and Musioka are highly educated people. Musali and Mudevari, ethnicity in politics in this country is not about a lack of education. Right. It is about a socialization. Mm -hmm. It is about the fact that ethnicity actually works in the political cal calculus of this country. It's not for a lack of trying to push issues onto the fore. We have tried. I believe at the beginning of this election cycle that it was going to be different until Royal Odinke showed up in Luanyanza and Uru Kenyatta showed up at the heartland of central Kenya. It changed the whole equation. It is very difficult for me now to go to Nyanza and argue with a young person and say, well, there's something that Uru has done and probably marries a second time. It is extremely difficult for me to convince anybody in central Kenya otherwise to say that Uru Kenyatta has basically failed this country and we need to look elsewhere for leadership. But do you and give up? My you, issue is you, that you do right. not give up. Okay. Do you give so, up? So you're saying we shouldn't give up? Me, me we, can't say, we, right, we, 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 can't, okay. we can't live uh -huh. in this cocoon of fear. That's because it's, okay. it's our generation. All right. And there are people who've gained because we, we, get, we get fearful and we become inactive. But we must keep on asking this question. We must keep on knocking this door. You should check we, 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 we must, <laughs> we must, sorry, we must break this glass ceiling okay. because, look, uh, we, we, it's not the youth that we are going to blame. No, no, no. Because uh -huh. the, the, the entire society right. is suffering. Yeah. So don't isolate one sector and imagine that they're going to emerge okay, angels of Okay, so it's a it. bigger sphere it's in a, which they're being socialized. Brother, yeah. okay. But we shouldn't so, give up. We need right. to guide so people. You're saying, let's not give up. Let's not, you know, sort of pander to fear. Mm. Uh, but let's do something about it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we've stated the problem. So what is the solution? You do see some flashes of hope on social media. Uh, when Kenyans rise up to, to a certain cause, to a particular cause, uh, you know, move this country forward. And then at some point, it just, you know, social media also just becomes another cesspool, if you like, of bigotry and, you know, tribal and, and, and ethnic comments that go uh, back and forth. And that's just social media. And there's a whole lot of young people, old people, middle-aged and everybody in between that are not on social media. So what do we start to do? I think Dr. Witty said something about the citizens and they need to rise up. So I how do we do this, Nanjir? One thing, um, following how social media has played out since the 2013 elections, um, when it really started becoming a sort of almost mainstream in the sense that you can get your finger on the pulse around what's happening at pretty much any corner of the country, <clears throat> granted it's not representative, um, is that these things are being tested. The cohesion aspect is being done now because you find there are people who probably have not even seen one co one other corner of the country yeah. but are able to interact with people from there. They, there's a lot of friction, granted, but there's also counter-narratives. Um, when I did a lot of research around the, I, this phenomenon that is hate speech um, back in the 2013 election, we found that for every time, you know, there seemed to be somebody who's trying to agitate people towards a form of ethnic chauvinism or trying to pit communities against one another, there was a strong counter-narrative to that. And that was really, really powerful. Um, something that you may not see with sort of like broadcast media where it's one to many and not necessarily the many talking back. That said, um, I think we've also now 
put ourselves in a box by also framing everything that happens in this country through the lens of social media. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we'll yeah. be here and we will, we will cite what's on social media. Right. Yeah. And maybe you have an SMS number, as you said mm -hmm. it earlier, but it probably costs somebody. So somebody who's watching this somewhere, mm -hmm. who wants to participate in this conversation, has a different perspective from another part of the country that's not catered for, is not able to be heard. So the, the politics of representation is, is starting to shape up, yes. Um, it's a lot about who will be seen where, who's going to shout the loudest, unfortunately. Um, but I think at the core of it is people are just busy trying to survive. People are busy trying to survive. Granted, it's not sustainable to bury our heads in the sand. But given everything that's bombarding people, given the fact that it's January 29th, there are any range of issues that have happened in 2017 alone in this country, which one do you, which one do you see to a natural conclusion? You know, you say problem, let's work towards solution. Just when you start thinking, another one hits you. And so we're being bombarded, and you could say it's even the system is designed to do that. To so, so keep you so, disillusioned because so, there's so yeah, many things coming So you coming get to a you. level of fatigue, and you know, Dr. Witty, you're saying, you know, the citizens give up. But, you know, to be honest, right now, drought, nurses want to go back on strike, doctors are on strike, lecturers are on strike, uh, the petroleum, you know, truck drivers were on strike, but that was quickly resolved. I mean, there's this a lot to process is there for the average Kenyan to say, okay, so let's deal with issue X. I mean, it's just, you know, from all directions. I think so what do citizens do? Democracy is enormously complex. And as we saw in the United States yeah. uh, this last election, you know, if you're a white male uh, and you live in the Rust Belt and you're basically waiting for the jobs to return from China, it's not going to happen. And it was easy for <laughs> Trump to organize around that. In a country like this, where literacy levels are not as high, as one might expect. Mm. And as Nigeria said, people buffeted by all kinds of problems. It is very easy for people to basically focus on the things that they think are important that basically enhance and sustain them on a daily basis. Uh, do they have food? Yeah. Do they have a job? Yeah. So it's basically survival. Yeah. So it is very difficult for them to be like you and I, who sit at their desks and think about these issues. You know, for them, it's basically responding and reacting to the things as they unfold. And it is, it is in real time. So I, I, th I think that you know, part of me says that uh, we have really set up ourselves for something that is grand. But I don't think that there's been careful preparation on the part of enabling citizens to participate in this thing called democracy. Mm. And I think we've taken everything else for granted. We've assumed that you can take people to schools and train them to be leaders and the leadership can be learned. But I think we've forgotten one of the most important jobs of being in a country or being in a nation, and that's the job of citizenship. How are we prepared to be citizens, effective, uh, effective custodians of the democratic space, mm -hmm. to be able to play in there with sufficient levels of information and ability to ask questions of the political class? I think until we go back to the fast space in terms of interrogating that very significant role that we have as citizens, then I think we, we, we will be doing not enough justice to this conversation. And yet we are living in a, we can call it new, political dispensation that encourages public participation. Uh, you know, we the people, and essentially was to give power back to the people. Devolution for you and I to decide uh, what happens with our money, with our development, that we are able to make those decisions. But yet, you know, here we are, and we're thinking mass voter registration, and that's <laughs> You know, top of mind. I, I, I think uh, first to go to where we are and we moving forward. Part of our problems, uh, we, we must appreciate that they're institutionalized, and they've been there over 50 years. Yes. This project on devolution, in its own unique way, is part of resolving the problems. Yeah. Because when you look at social accountability uh, through the different forums that exist. Uh, Today, people are able to hold the county governments into account, albeit in a small manner. But when you compare to the national government, eh, people would say, whatever is happening in Nairobi, and I'm from Turukana, I can't resolve it. So the demonstrations will be around Nairobi, but not in Turukana. And then it will be seen as an elite problem. Today, the, the, fact, the fact that the governments have been resolved, and you have county government, and there is an aspect of social accountability, because we can say, I saw Kyoko come here. Kyoko was nobody. He became a chief officer and those are the principal secretaries in the county. And that guy used to live this way. Today we've seen that he's built a palatial home in his place. And the money that was used for to build that place was the money that was supposed to build a primary school. There is accountability. And we must grow our things from the bottom going up. Mm -hmm. It is painfully slow, 
but it is structured and it resolves our problem. I have faith that in the next 10 years, really, the, or the next election, leave this one of 2017, because it's still being organized on the parameters of 2013, because the actors are still the same. Mm. But I believe in 2022, uh, we will have a new crop of leaders, we will have a new dispensation. We'll have 10 years of looking right. at... However, uh, Kyoko, all of those that we hear today are talking about how they'll be present in 2022. But, 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 There's people who've already it declared okay. I, their I possible it's, candidature it's for 2022. It's fine to have ambition. Don't blame anybody for having ambition. Yeah. I don't think that should distract us. Okay. What, what we should look at is the baby steps that we're doing today, mm. the need to return our elections into a focus-based issue. Mm -hmm. Of course, these elections will be organized ethnically, there will be consequences that will be suffered. There might be winners. And then the tough questions will be asked. Yes, and I liked what happened in Kirinyaga or in Meru when Uhuru was there. And the people were saying, you made us, you gave us promises, and you were not able to see them through. Uh, the problem that happened in uh, Bungoma, when the vice president has to divert his way to other areas, it means the level of social accountability okay. exists. So okay. don't give up. So I, I hear what you're saying, that, you know, the it, it's nascent, but it's there. It is there. Uh, and there's something to work with. But I want to uh, pose this text message uh, to you, lady gentlemen. Um, Nyakwar Andiri from Nairobi says, even on politics is the underlying factor in our country. Unless we get proper leadership, we shall continue facing these same challenges. We can only change this by mobilization of the electorate with no voters card to stand out and be counted in this change movement. To a degree, is he not correct? The persons that we elect are the ones that will decide the future of this country. Right. So do we bury our heads in the sand by saying, OK, you know what, we can sort of do away with the politics and we as the people can sort of move this country forward. But there is a structure under which, you know, around which we work. And do you agree with him that politics is the underlying factor? I mean, <coughs> as Joseph said, we are political animals. But I think what's really also tragic <coughs> to take on the point about citizenship is we have reduced voting to the event, um, civic education to an event. And so the process is around what we do between, 20, what have we done between 2013 and 2017 to build citizenship is a question. Now, there are, as you said, examples of where people have held people accountable. At very hyper-local levels, they're fascinating stories. I mean, in um, Chief Karaoke's sublocation, he's already consulted his um, constituents ar around the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and which ones are applicable to them, so that somebody at the county level doesn't decide for them they need water when what they need is schools. So there are cases of that, and you're right about the hyper-local thing. It's just that I don't think the civic education about this new dispensation we have was, has gone beyond being the event. So there were little pamphlets maybe that were put out, but the process of how that is exercised and how we breathe life to the Constitution mm -hmm. and how we breathe life to the institutions we're trying to build, those, that's the missing link. And so I think it's also a bit tragic to say everything boils down to whom we elect and not necessarily about whom, who helps us think through the systems and what they allow us to do. Now, that doesn't have to be a politician in the sense of they're running for your vote. The problem is we believe that it's only those people. And so we're trying to find unicorns um, who will, will be elected that we've put in pastors, we've put in, yeah. you know, people with we'll well, good standing. Yeah. But the system is deeply flawed. Okay. So we have to find other ways where even when we cover, when we have good people going in, we're able to cover them because we are awakened to what um, <clears throat> is in our disposal. So we can have, even if it's in our survival mechanisms, at least 10 minutes a day to say, I will take this call to action. I will organize this way. I will put my voice here. I will, you know, I'll contribute to something. But that's, I think that's what we need to start having a conversation about. Because if we keep idolizing the idea of politics and putting politicians on a pedestal, we'll keep having this cycle. And at the rate we're going, we cannot survive it forever. Maybe, right. maybe to add on a little bit, yeah. uh, in terms of the question that was asked, mm. we, we need to understand that uh, po politics, uh, classical definitions of politics, mm -hmm. as the art of the possible, politics as a determining who gets what, when, and how. It, it's, it's our daily life. The question is, just like there's no problem in our tribes, because that's what we are. I'm a Kamba, yeah. she's a Kisi, yeah. you are a Luo. Yeah. There's no problem with that. But the problem normally comes when we start looking the lenses of tribalism to allocate resources in this country. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is. Now, we must demystify that resource allocation paradigm and, and give it a new parameter of engagement. Otherwise, for as long as it's a blank check, for as long as it is exists as it exists today, then the tribal element of organization will always be at the forefront. Now, there's no homogeneous society. 
and let's not look for yeah. a homogeneous society. Right. Yeah. It will be divided. We'll be divided on the basis of tall people mm. and short people, mm. fat people, skinny mm. people. We will always be divided, workers and employees. Mm. So the, the heterogeneity and making that heterogeneity within ourselves to work is what we should all aspire to. Mm. Th that's how I look at it. So whatever else we look at, tribalism will exist, but we must minimize its centrality in allocation of resources in our country. My sense is that uh, this country is somewhat overwhelmed by politics and politicians. And uh, I think that that primacy of politics, the primacy of political process, the primacy of political cycles uh, as a key determinant of what we get and what we don't get is, 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 is fundamentally problematic. Uh, Dr. Witte, if, if you look I want at me to ask you this, because you talk about politics and it being central. So in this country, we, I mean, Kenyans are political animals. I mean, they tune into the news every day at nine to see uh, what who is saying. In countries like Japan, for example, one prime minister after the next, one leader after the next. I mean, the turnover uh, in some of these countries is extremely high, yet development continues to happen at a... So, you know, what because is it? What, what? I, I think it's because the institutions are strong. The institutions beneath the presidency, yeah. the, the institutions that undergird the, the, the political structure, the yeah. epics, which is the prime minister in Japan, are really strong. Yeah. And, and that's the point I was going to come to. Kenya's civil society is very strong but it only kicks in when there's a crisis. In 2007, they actually got the politicians to sit down and hold their horses and get the country back to its senses. Then they checked out. As Nigeria said, they only organize around the political process. How about if, if civil society, in all its shades, I don't mean civil society that just does for education and all kinds of uh, anti-establishment activism, but civil society that builds community assets, that builds community capability, that creates a vital voice of society that then holds government into check, that asks for what belongs to them, that finds out why the road isn't built and why schools are failing and why hospitals are that, not. Uh, I mean, already a number of uh, the Shuleyangu Initiative, TISA, not, a number of those. But not to a point where it now rides above the political space okay. uh, in a sense that uh, we begin to invest in institutions. That it doesn't matter who the president is as mm. long as due process is followed. And the chief justice is going to do what they're going to do and the IBC is going to do what it's doing. But n right now, this thing is so dependent on who is the president. And I think part of it is also uh, a collusion between the middle classes uh, especially the the, uh, the, the, uh, the ranks of the professionals who basically are the ones out for the taking when it comes to these political spaces and, 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 what, and what people get and what people don't get. And then they aggregate and create an agenda that is highly ethnicized because, let's face it, who are the people who are benefiting the most from Uhuru's government? Across the, the ethnic divide, they're the, they're, they're the elite in this society. Raila will come in, he'll bring another elite that will be fundamentally Luo, but we'll have everybody else from other, uh, other tribes. But the person who really bears the brunt of this ethnicization of our politics mm. and, and this very strong elite culture that basically protects its own space is, is the ordinary Monainchi, whose voice is drowned out, uh -huh. whose water issues never come to the fore. Right. And, and, and I think that's where we need to, we need, as Trump said, the government must be taken back to the people. Okay. And how do we do this? This is the fundamental revolution uh -huh. that we need. All but right. The, our revolution, system? yes, in our value system. Oh. I'll, I'll give you the opportunity okay. to just give that in your closing comments. I want to start um, with, with Nigeria. So where do we go from here? Some people have suggested um, a total blackout of politics in the media. Um, let's not have politicians. Let's not feature them when they speak about certain issues. Might that radical sort of shift or decision spur people into having conversations and taking control? <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> I see Kyoko reacting, and he'll get his moment. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold you think? Yeah. Um, I know that when it comes then to the media and their job, yeah. there's the argument that, but because we are political animals and we'll tune in and we'll watch that. Yeah. Therefore, the ratings, I mean, the quantitative metrics say, right. you know, we want this. Okay. One thing I think that has not yet been understood by the media that will do well to establish the qualitative metrics. Mm -hmm. um, part, tuning on the TV at 9 o'clock is probably a, a culture right now mm -hmm. at this point, you know. Um, and when I tune in and you see that as me, you know, as a number and a node that registers, how do you know that I'm yearning for more? if you're not listening, or right? What, what or what way, more yeah. am I looking for? Okay. The other thing that I think 
is missing is the contextualization even of that political news. Okay. So even if you cover what person X said, how about even just something running as a buy check or a fact check? Okay. Because they're throwing all sorts of incredulous claims yeah. um, that they get away with. We're looking to the media uh, in well, its the many media forms. heavily fact-checked Trump. And not, and not mainstream um, media. And continue case. to do so but even now with, with all of his case, executive The U.S. Orders. case, there's also, that's a whole other you know, conversation maybe <laughs> okay. we should have. Yeah. But uh, what I mean is just introduce that culture because okay. people are being bombarded with what these people are saying. And it remains that. By the time the, this is framed in context, it's a, sometimes too little too late. It's right. probably heavily so no textual. But context. textual formats, okay, and also understand what your audience is looking for because right. I think people are yearning for more. It's not necessarily a blackout of politics. Uh -huh. Maybe some will say so. I mean, we are not homogenous, as he said. Yeah. But contextualizing what he, you know, politician X said this today, but in reference to what he was saying two weeks ago when he was mm. seeking our vote, mm -hmm. it was a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a different way to report about politics. It's not just episodes upon episodes, but puts them in a theme and context okay. that will start helping how we also process the political aspect. Because we're not going to stop being political animals today. All right. Your final thoughts? Just where we should be going? Solutions I think now? we are headed down an interesting ride, but I, I agree with Joseph when he said about giving in to fear. Yeah. That would be the biggest mistake we can make. Mm -hmm. Or apathy in the sense that, um, you know, our own version of, in our own safety spaces, let, mm -hmm. them, let them eat cake. I'll, I'll sort me and mine yeah. out, um, and somebody else will do that. And last but not least, I think we have to figure out how to stop making politicians the institutions. That is the task we have. So if we can use this process to start getting us to think about the elective cycle and our citizenship beyond being the event of voting every five years, I think we'll be down the, uh, heading down a better path. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fair enough. Kyoko? The, the two, I mean, two or three issues that I'd like to raise. First is the media can't be neutral. The media's nor is not neutrality. It's factuality. Neutrality means I will give Kyoko enough time, same with Dr. Witt. Because then when you do analysis, Kyoko was aired 30 minutes, same as, that's neutrality. But factuality is to go beyond what Kyoko said and do an interrogation of what are you saying? Because when somebody sits here or g gets air coverage and articulates a position which is a lie, and the media houses publishes it and pushes it out, by the time you're reacting to it, then you're told, but you're not an authority. Yvonne talked about it. Mm -hmm. KTN said it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would have been a lie if they had said it? You, you, you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. But the media needs to play the factual role. Mm -hmm. Neutrality truly undermines the growth of our politics. That's a fact checking that happens in America. Okay. Uh, secondly, is a question of values. Mm. What are our values? Do we fight corruption because I have no opportunity of being corrupt? Or do we fight corruption because I actually abhor corruption? Yeah, but we also see other people benefiting from corruption. That's the point. So could, if, you know, Both of if, us could be in university, our, if, but one person gets a job over me, yes. so? So now, when, I'm, when I choose a position to say I do not like corruption, is it because I have not had an opportunity to interact with it? I have not known an uncle who's an MD somewhere who can give me a job? It's because mm. when I saw Kyoko engaging in it, he never got caught. Yes. So I know so I can get away it, with it. Truly. So for as long as we establish rules and regulations, and yet our value system upholds and says that the successful people, all of them be, are through corrupt means, then our kids will also do the same thing. Yeah. So we must go back to our value system as a country. We must show that anybody who engages in corrupt activities, there is a very decisive and a quick action in dealing with it. Mm. It is shameful that a person who the entire country has condemned is gunning for a governor's seat, seat and truly looks possible, might come back to Nairobi as a governor that the person we chased out of Nairobi as a thief goes back to Shags and comes back as an MP with all glory and pomp. <laughs> now, when you tell me to, have, to fight corruption, it means you are demeaning my ambitions yeah. of coming back to Nairobi in pomp and glory. So <laughs> that disconnect, really, is, is, is a factual thing. Then finally, in my, I, yesterday I had, I had a medical camp somewhere in, in our area, uh, trying to get doctors to come and treat our local people. <coughs> and I had a discussion with some five dentists, and they gave me an interesting position, that it is, the, it is not the doctors who are on strike. It is the government that is on strike. <laughs> now, I'd never thought about it that way. And they told me, Kyoko, you called us here. We've come here, we've treated 800 people. If the government decides to end this strike, 
we will go back to do the thing that took us to school and the thing that we enjoy doing most. Mm. Those are committed young boys. That is a spirit that we should encourage to people. I, I, I really felt good meeting them. And uh, to our soldiers who died, really, uh, let's not politicize yeah. a lot of issues. Yeah. Uh, those soldiers who died defending our country yeah. and holding our flag high up there, Really, as a country, do you we think we've mourned them enough, though? No, we haven't. I mean, it seems like you know we, we haven't. We, we've just moved on. There's and it, elections it, it, going it, yeah, on it, 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 in it, another country. It's, it's and really sad yeah. that uh, uh, the CDF, I mean the, the the army headquarters, gives a position, then a political figure gives an, a control position. Right. I think as a country, when we, when we are under attack, when our soldiers are under attack, we must all come together, mm -hmm. give the military the first right of information. Mm -hmm. Let them tell us what they, what happened. Mm -hmm. And if there'll be cracks in that information, give it time. As a country, we must be proud of our military. Okay, uh, right. I think uh, that will be my closing. Great, thanks, mm. Kyoko. Uh, He's talking about a value system. Now, aren't you remind you about that study so we, yeah. that was mm. done and has been quoted numerous and hundreds of times about young people and their thoughts on corruption and leadership. I mean, you were at the very heart of that yeah. study. So when he talks about values, where do you see us with that? You know, as Majiro said, you know, we don't live in a vacuum. The values are caught, they're not yeah. taught. Yeah. And, 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 and young citizens have uh, caught the values that uh, we've presented them with. Uh, they love money, and they love to back money by hook or crook. Mm -hmm. uh, they love impunity, and corruption pays. It pays bills, it builds big houses, it, it, it buys fancy cars, yeah. and it can buy you political office. Mm -hmm. you know, that's just the fundamental. Uh, context in which our young people grow in. But uh, you know, as Kyoko said, we, we, we cannot give up. And I, and I think the person that really has to step up to the plate is the citizen. It is not for us to turn off our TV because we don't want to listen to politicians. It is for us to amplify the voices of citizens. We, we must take this country back. If we care enough about this country, this is the time to push this election to an issue-based election. Let's tell Raila to just hold it and tell Kenya to just stuff it. Enough is enough. Tell this country and the citizens what you've done for the past five years. Tell this country why you need to be the president of this country, Mr. Odinga. It is not just about sending Jubilee home. It is not just about Jubilee being entitled to a second term. What are the issues? We are really under the weight of taxes. There are no teachers in classrooms. Doctors are underpaid. The police live in squalid existence. Our cities are collapsing. What are the issues that we care about? Are citizens they angry are enough? Are citizens angry we enough? We need to Do get really angry. We need to get really angry. We need to take back this country. This country does not belong to Mr. Odinga. It doesn't belong to Mr. Kenyatta. This is not Ruto's backyard. This country belongs to all of us. And we must tell the politicians to step aside and the citizens, we must take charge of this country. And I think until that happens, society must organize around all its resources, including civil society. It's not just about getting people to go to vote and educating us about our voters' rights and how we should vote. It is about claiming that rightful place, which is determining the destination of this country. Mm, thank you very much, Dr. Alex Awiti, Joseph Kyoko, and Nanjira Sambuli. I thank you uh, for your time and your thoughts. I just want to read um, one or two SMSs here. You didn't leave your name, but you said, in Kenya, we need to stop idolizing the political class. How may be the question? My take is we need to reduce the pay to politicians so that we can have doctors, agriculturists, economists use their skill in developing the nation, not sitting on them in parliament. Fair enough. Um, Kabugan Jeru from Sagana, you say, it's a shame that I'm a student and the Kenyan politician takes me for granted and it's time to kick them out. Um, Voters' registration is not for the politicians. It should even be self-driven. You didn't leave your name with that text. Um, here's another one. These are the fruits of our founding fathers who didn't look 500 years after they left leadership. Bad governance to the extent of um, other against other tribes. So those are your thoughts so far. Um, I wonder what you keep thinking regarding the conversation. Uh, we've had any new uh, thoughts that have crystallized. They say it's up to the citizens. Are you ready? Are you angry enough? Or do you think uh, that we're in a good place right now? Because there is room for that thought as well. Um, I will be taking a look at your tweets. Remember to keep using the hashtag checkpoint. We'll be getting to that. And uh, my take is a little bit around that as well. But we also have the number. We've got less to forget. We'll be taking you down memory lane as well as the day's sports news. So don't stay with us. We have much, much more to come. Thank you. Thanks.